naturally builds into a diffuser or something like that? Or do you feel like that's not that bad needed? I don't think you necessarily have to take the mana burn route, but diffuser buyers. PL is in the pool. Yep. Five seconds remaining. Although so is Weaver. Yeah, Weaver mm -hmm. could get the mana break ability now as one of her one of her talents. Although PL can Medusa just like get an axe and just kill all the yeah. opponents with one go? So I'm not sure how reliant that is. Yeah. The thing is like sometimes you could just overwhelm Medusa with, with damage. The other day we saw Chessie play like a safe lane Jakaro. And just had such an insane amount of damage that they just killed the Medusa. Ooh, it's okay. an Underlord. This is looking like a hella scary okay. five man pushing squad. And, um. Seeing this, if I'm Navi, I wanna go split push against this. They have two heroes I could catch. Shaman is not gonna get blinked till much remaining. later. Well, they also have a severely lack of lockdown on the set of Navi. Five seconds yeah. Remaining. I mean, a lot of it is just relying on that Shaman getting a blink, right? Is, is Sven an option for them, for Crystallize? You're playing Sven into Medusa. Yeah. No, I think you want a mobile range core that can split push and then pick. Like what? I, I do like Weaver a lot. Yeah, Weaver's Weaver? fine. Yeah. Uh, Storm is okay too, although Storm might not have the, the laking and punching power required. Mm -hmm. This is not a lineup that I think you, you're, you want to directly fight up against. It doesn't look like it. They look uh, very beefy. A little bit scary. What is the what is the peak time for OG? You reckon? For OG, yeah. uh, I'm thinking like Mech on the dying, mm -hmm. and they pretty much could go whenever they want after. That. Okay. <laughs> once like Ults is ready on Shadow, uh, Shadow Shaman. Once Undying has his tombstone. Because we know Undying falls off a little late game. But do you feel like OG's lineup is, is too worried about that? Because Medusa, you know, doesn't really fall off at all? I think it really depends on what Navi picks here. Medusa, there, there is a... Because this is basically a single core Medusa lineup, mm -hmm. and your, your, your carry or your no-tail hero is the Underlord, this lineup will fall off at some point. Yeah, okay. Well, Medusa is also one of those heroes I could put the whole team on her shoulder, though. So, be a PA, mobile, not ranged. Ooh, I don't. Mm. You're not convinced. I'm not convinced. Because one, the thing about PA is, is once you blink strike in, you're blink striking into a lot of things. So Navi's timing is that they're gonna try to win relatively early. Once you pick up the BKB, the PA, Deso BKB rather, you're just looking to basically stop any momentum that OG has. Yeah, I don't know where this hero is. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll figure it out. So Navi does have a timing where I think they are going to be stronger than OG, and they yeah. have to be very precise with that timing. With that said, I like OG's draft. It's much easier to play. It seems very fail-safe. Yes. So what I'm going to go with OG. Um, Ten seconds remaining. I'm going to go with OG as well. Uh, I think on paper, if they execute correctly, like OG should just be able to like run down a lane as five, mm -hmm. and it's incredibly for it, it should be hard for Navi to fight into that. Yeah. Like your your core is a is a PA, yep. like it's gonna be blinking into an abyssal underlord, <laughs> like aura that that hero is not gonna do any damage. Navi does have a lot stronger lanes though. Yeah, like they, I they think uh, if think if Navi is doing real well in their lanes, they're gonna do it. But I don't think they will. So I think I'm gonna go for OG as well. But it is, I think it's gonna be decided in the laning stage. But uh, let's not take our word for it. Let's hear from uh, from our casters, Odi Pixel and Fog. Hear what they have to say. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Yes, the final series we have: OG versus Navi. OG, they need those two wins. VP, they'll be at home holding up the Na'Vi fanboy flags as they oh, yeah. they are hoping that Na'Vi can do it here. We'll see who's going to be able to take it. I'm Odie Pixel. I'm here with Fog. And uh, what have we got here? Well, what, what do we reckon, Fog? There's there's an Underlord. And that final pick, PA. I mean, I feel, isn't it a bit of a scary game to pick a PA into? It's, it's a bit tough, isn't it? They've got a good amount of burst damage. It's mostly the control coming from the Shadow Shaman in the pit. I'm, I'm liking what OG's got going for mm. them here. They've got this late game, they've got the way to push out the waves quickly in case it 
something do, do go wrong and like Navi can get to the base. They've got Underlord to deep push. They've got Puck to deep push. They've got Shadow Shaman. And like the panel was mentioning, they've got that strong five man coming in with the Shadow Shaman wards. So I think go time for OG is hit six on Shadow Shaman and Puck. Ideally, or most of the time, I look at Undying and this hero, we've seen it several times, especially here at Dream League. It just hasn't been great. However, a lot of times we see the Undying pick, there's a severe lack of lockdown. Okay. OG did not do that this time around at all. They have Puck, they have Shadow Shaman. These two heroes make up for the lack of lockdown on the Undying. And look at this movement already from OG. Ready to kick things off aggressively. As they smoke up, move over to invade Na'Vi's jungle. Na'Vi will be able to avoid this though. They're all up towards the top. And it looks like it'll be the classic, just two for two. Trying to scout lanes. Bounties. Jerax with the smoke on the left side actually gets a safe ward down. So Medusa will have... Very nice time in that mid lane, be able to get those snake bounces. And as we've seen, Medusa now in the mid lane is a lot better to play, just because the ramps are so minuscule. Look look at that mid lane ramp, it's it's so tiny. You are going to get hit by snake every single time if you walk up. And we're assuming that Jarex will play around that mid lane to start. Give Rezo the best possible situation. And no tail should farm bottom too, so all three lanes for OG should farm quite nicely and not get pressured too much as long as they don't suffer from the rotations from Roger. Shadow Shaman is buff hero though. Yeah, quick blast from Jax to send Roger back off. Roger's gonna come back in. Uh, just passing by as it seems. Pass from the cogs down, trying to trying to drain that of Reza, but Reza he's far enough back, and in fact he'll be able to farm up one of those cogs. An easy goal for Reza. Yep. They just have to watch out for the TPs from General on OG, so they don't get punished for it. No Tail's eating a lot of harassment bottom as well from that Nature Prophet. Early levels, it's a little bit painful for the Underlord until you get your levels in your passive up, your Atrophy Aura. But S4, as we've seen, he, especially in that last series, was the big playmaker and the big saving grace for OG. So that's probably what we're going to see him be doing again this time around. He has a very, very favorable matchup. Puck versus PA. They can just easily push him out with that Undying as well. I guess that's the question. How much farm is Crystallize actually going to be able to get up in this top lane? Because it feels like if the OG play the lane nicely, it's, it's going to be hard for him to find it. Mid lane, though. Jax. Jax goes on to Roger. Snake as well. One more Some hit. Did they get the shock? Oh. Did get the shock. Very close, though. Just got to go back to base. Flying. That's well, they're getting aggressive here. Look at this. So they push the lane in. Being around the tower, really trying to keep this pressure on up top. They don't want him to get free last hits on the tower. They did a decent job there too. Crystallize actually missed, I think, three of them. Jarex as well gets a bounty rune. He gets both. OG gets all four bounty runes at the two minute mark. Both supports making the moves around. That's the bottom lane. It's starting to catch back up once say, he gets level two and three. Exactly what you said, yeah. yeah. The progression in the levels. And mid, now Jarex has a DD rune, so that's a 154 damage right click from that Shadow Shaman. Very painful for Dendi and Roger to step up. Look at the denies on Jarex. Two and seven. Going for every single one he possibly can. Clean suddenly getting harder and harder for Na'Vi. That's one out of the many three that... need to step up in difficulty is OG. Getting some good farm now on their cores. Top lane. Crystallize is farming nicely. Crystallize, is, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. But S4 still finding farm out of this. And as you say, once there's a few more levels, it's only going to get harder for Na'Vi mid lane. Leading on to Roger. They'll pop down the cards for resolution. He's locked in there with him. Bringing him down low. Dendi trying to help Roger man up, but it's not going to work for Na'Vi. As Rezo gets the first blood, taking down Roger. I kind of want to see one of the, uh, Rezo maybe buy a bottle this time. Since Jarax is having such good rune control, I think he could use that little bit extra mana. What does he bring out on the courier? Yeah, he's just gonna go for boots. He'll be able to run away from the clock. That's fine as well. I guess S4 will probably go for bottle anyway on the puck. Oh, with Fly. Fly gets the salve cancel from Crystallize there. Crystallize is gonna be zoned out for a bit. And this is where S4 can catch back up in last hits. But yeah, three lanes. Pretty nice for OG. No till start to get those levels up. Hey, he's start killing it. Look at this TS down there as well. Yeah. 19 for 4 against the 12 for 9, going very well now for Notel in that 1v1. And uh, for the most part, looks to stay as a, a 1v1. Uh, Jerex is going to head down here. Looking for the rune. The sprout by General. 
Jarek's dog. He's on for the kill. Yeah, he's gonna get it. All right, you take my bounty rune, I'll take your life. Says Jarex. As he's in as he's out, and he's out, and that was not worth at all for General to try and come over and contest that rune. Now he can haste, get the bounty, go yeah. back to base, TP back mid, help out Rezo more. Maybe he actually just gets a ward up first. Oh, he doesn't actually have one. Okay. Trying to get the rep on Rezo. In some trouble here. He's got fairy fire on his stick, though. TP coming in as well from Fly. So Rezo's fine. Jarex is there. He's going for Dendi. Oh, Jarex! He nearly gets it. Fairy Fire comes out, does keep Dendi alive. And Jarex himself oh will also get out, but he's, he's zoning Dendi out massively. Top lane S4 getting gone on. But with the orb as he escapes. There, Jarex making the movements. He's really getting into this. I mean, this is what, to be fair, is it, is it the third time he's played this yeah. Karma today? He's had it every game. He's in it. He's angry. He's gonna start stacking up some neutrals to have that for the Medusa, and they have a shrine available, so better use of time there by Jarex. He knows he's pretty beefy now. At this stage, he can sort of get in aggressively, General. First on the Sprout. Bully Valade is there for no time. He's just constantly shoving this lane in under the tower with the Firestorm. 32 to 12 against the 15 for 11, doubling the CS of the Nature's Prophet in this 1v1. Yep. And look at this, Jarax. We see the circles coming up from Navi. They know that a rotation is coming down, so General has to be and will be careful to step up here. No levels of pit just yet on no tail. Jarex trying to go for the E through. There's phase boots on general though. Scurry away. A very hard for him to close the gap. Up top, S4 again. Being able to zone, crystallize back. Crystallize is doing well, considering that the pressure that OG were trying to put on him up top at the start. 25 CS on the PA, not bad at all. Fly, getting jumped on by crystallize. And they go, They're just pushing him off from the bounty runes. I think they're realizing that OG's had really good control of that. Roger versus Jarex. It will be just fine. Well, Jarex. Definitely this middle and bottom lane being the, the biggest differences between OG and Na'Vi. No tilts. No tilts. Yeah. Cruising it right now. 39 16 to the 17 of General. That one quick rotation by Jarex just really catapulted No Tail forward. And General can do very little against this sort of pressure. He needs to have backup if he wants to punish the way that no -Tail's playing. Yeah. Roger will head back down here on the clockwork. Uh, it's going to mean there's no clock mid and more space for Rezo's Medusa. Navi gets a D ward up top. They kill Fly's freshly placed ward that was on the high ground there. Since they saw him there going for the bounties over and over again, they assumed that it was placed. I think they also had a ward watching his movement to go there. No tail. Getting a lot of right clicks, Roger trying to close the gap. No tail. Double TPs from the supports. Yep, and that'll put Roger off for sticking around for more. He's got to get out of there. That sort of reaction comes through. He says, has to back away. And no tail. He's certainly receiving the, the backup he needs. He's allowing him to just stick around. I mean, he's, he's low on health, but he knows he's fine. He's an underlord. He's got three points in the passive. Up top, Crystallized looking for S4. Quick orb and a phase shift. And s back to safety. Yeah, very hard to kill Puck this game throughout all stages. There's no stuns. It's Clockwork, who's not reliable whatsoever versus Puck. And with the old court, mid lane, Dendi in some trouble here. Jarrett just got the grab. And with S4 coming in with the rotation, Dendi, he will go down. No man of stick charges. Enough to save that Piper's life. Right? Got eyes onto Roger. S4, think about it. He's got a Dream Coil. Doesn't want to pop it down. Doesn't feel it's worth it. It's a four clock kill. He'll keep it for bigger things having a very great start to the early game, especially with the Medusa. Oh, fly. It's got a haste ring. Uh, should be enough to keep him alive. They're trying to go for the Sprout, but he's out of there. Face boom is indeed complete for Crystallize. So he has got now a bit of a punch, but still it's the, the lack of control on S4 that's been the issue in that sort of matchup. No Very hard for him to do anything about the, about the pup. Yeah. Noto's got a solid two levels over everybody else yeah. in the game. It's going for the rush four step as well for the cogs being able to displace. They're going to have a lot of different four steps. I'm assuming it's going to be Underlord, it's going to be Shadow Shaman, and it's going to be the Medusa with very early ones coming out. Maybe Rezo prioritizes just getting Mask of Madness and some damage so he can just get that farm on. Since he does have a couple stacks coming out from Jerex on the Ancients and the Hard Camp on the right side. Now Noto getting a little bit of tower damage. Keeping the Atrophy Aura stacks up. 
beauty about playing it versus Nature's Prophet is you're always capable of killing tree so you're getting that bonus damage. Mid lane, then they tried to make a bit of a go onto Resolution with the Viper Strike, but still not the damage needed to take down Resolution. He's actually going to come back in on this. He's feeling confident, Reza. He's still hanging around. I mean, Denny will chase this down. Reza does have to be a little respectful of the punch that Denny can offer. So Rezo just trying to get the most out of the lane before he heads back to base anyway. Justino generally comes back into this bottom lane, but there really is nothing that he can do to stop Notel's reign in this bottom lane. He's just owning the lane as the Thunderlord and it's an issue because Na'Vi struggling with dealing with him up top. Quick jump in from Crystallized, does get the crit. And he may be able to chase this one. Ah oh, no, face shift's there again. S was fine. He's gonna go back to base. But they are not getting tower on top just yet. He pretty much forced them to kind of dive him. Crystallize is still farming very nice though, top of the net worth. But the big discrepancy is that mid lane. Yep. Dendi getting punished really hard by that that dual lane that was there for the entire time. Plus the DD that Jarax did find earlier. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Help out Espel. So got some XP as well. Okay. The snake bounces in the mid, just keep hitting Dendi. He's actually put down to 300 life, and Rezo's pretty much full mana from all this. Roach is hanging around mid, but not quite level 6 on the block, though. Very little he can do in terms of jumping in, down bottom. General is just being forced back away from his tower. Roger, Lane, will fly. Fine. Yeah, fly came up to the high ground. He got the soul rip and the tombstone, so fly will survive. And Roger and Snake are being forced back down. Let's get in with the slow. Yeah, I'm trying to move it on to Reza. Indeed, up top, S4 gets the kill onto Crystallize. And Dendi will not be able to claim the life of Resolution. So, what, what happened top for? Coil. He just got coiled by uh, S4. He tried to jump in and kill S4, but then Jarex just comes in and shackles him up. And Jarex has Serpent Wards available. They have a catapult top if he wants to go for it here, but. Chooses to make the move around. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, if they can punish no I mean, again. They've got a couple of heroes around it, Roger as well, but they're... It's a hard, hard kill to attempt for. He has the ult, he has a TP scroll, and we'll see how he looks to play this. It off. He can't, he's been battery has it up, and you're alright. He can't quite cast the ultimate, get it going. I don't know if it would matter anyway, between the three of them, they did have a decent amount of damage, and that is Underlord down. Oh, and the snake chased Dendi across the map, and now watch right, Rezo's mana. The snake is coming back. We're gonna see it traveling on the secondary cam. Oh, global <laughs> snake. Oh, hello. Crystallize goes in quick with the crit. Flies there with the backup, but Roger, level six now. Hookshot, Rezo's out of mana. This is a big kill for Na'Vi, and they'll get it. Resolution down. Generals keep it up to the high ground. Jarek's there with the shackles. The tombstone's gone. Jarek's now in trouble as well as Crystallize ready to chase down for more. Roger, body blocks Jarek's health with the battery. So takes another Crystallize. He's actually looking over to fly. Jumps around behind the tower. They're focusing the Undying. with Dendi there as well. Crystallize, he'll find the kill. S4's come into the fight, but he's all alone as Notel's being zoned away. S4's down as OG just turn up the feedometer. They got collapsed on very quickly by Navi, rotating everybody here. You see yeah. Dendi walked all the way from bottom to the mid lane. Roger as well. Those are very quick rotations coming out from Navi. OG had no idea. 112th time that Dendi and Fly face off. The biggest Western rivalry. Wow. To the good old Alliance ones. I mean, no surprise, you know, Dendi and Fly, two of the originals. In terms of professional Dota players, they've been around a long time. They've played a lot of games. And here we see it again. I mean, Na'Vi just played this perfectly. And this was this is a dream fight for a PA at this stage, just to be able to turn up and uh, have this sort of impact. Having your team set up for kill after kill after kill. Yeah, Dendi, like we said, you see him like, walking through the bottom river yeah. at that entire time, and collapsing onto that mid lane. You even managed to get those more elusive kills, like S4, who just steps a, a step too far. Still though, there is a 2k lead for OG Na'Vi. We'll need another fight like that to close the gap. But uh, yeah. as we can see, that, that does pretty much half the job towards getting themselves back ahead. OG's about to have one of their big items still picked up. The Blink Dagger on Puck is 200 gold away. He should have it right after this top crit wave. And he does if he's able to purchase it from the side shop. And Notel is going to be doing that build that we saw him do versus Mouse and Captain Jack. Fly actually mid, getting chased out. Could go down here pretty easily to the Master Madness jump. 
Crystallized looking very scary now indeed. These are a lot of pit kills that the PA is getting involved in. Yeah. So we saw Notel play the Underlord versus Mouse and he went for the just full tank. Crimson Guard, etc. Uh, just like, I think he had maybe Greaves on top of that, but he was just like, extremely durable in that game and it's a really good approach for this PA. Roger, followed up. That's a big ancient stack for Rezo. You can start working on that one. And since all ancients have mana now, it's the dream for Medusa to get all your mana restored on first name. And if Tombstone committed, they will clean that one up nicely. How's Crystallize doing towards the uh, Desolator after Mask of Mana? He's got a little bit of time. Still doing pretty nice. But he's, yeah, he's, telling you, he's keeping up with the cause of, yeah. of Na'Vi, uh, sorry, of OG, and the same to be said for General. General getting the split push on. It's only Dandy that's a little bit behind on the Viper, but if now we can find a few objectives with this general split push, that's going to bump Dandy back up as well with that tower gold. And this was there, looking to form some sort of a defense. You just have to be careful, Snaker with the wraparound. He had a poison upon him. He'll go for the jump and quick silence to make sure that there's no disruption to, to cause issues for the puck as he escapes. They will get the tower though for now. Great, great start there coming forward for them, boosting up Dandy up as you mentioned. He really needs it. Crystallized, trying to engage on mid here. All of OG is starting to collapse, but first they're gonna farm up this other gigantic ancient stuff. And an obvious thing is, they're already backing themselves away. Tower drops down the pit. And he's fine, and Crystallized, they will come back to mid, resume the farming. They'll bring Rezo over, away from the ancients, just in case the fight does get forced by Na'Vi. And they just do still right there. In from OG, as they're leading straight away. Jarek just drops the wards and the shackles. He's caught Dendi. Dendi's gone, and that will be the tier 1 tower going down in favor of OG. Quick and easy kill as Dendi was out on his own, and OG not afraid to dive near the tower. And so we've seen Jarrax. Tears have some very, very nice plays on this gun. Yeah, now they can go back to those ancient seeds of fortune. Very good decision making coming out from OG. With those serpent wards, always wanting to use them near the tower. Fly. And S4, they find General Bottom. They've got the coil. Try and get himself away, sprouting fly back, but S4 will chase down and got a good, good amount of burst indeed. Just going straight for the Yule Slips as well, so he can keep up the elusiveness and also have that extra bit of catch. Yeah, happy to see that. Uh, and yeah, Rezo, actually Rezo is going to go for four steps. Yeah. Just everyone trying to build four steps to deal with that clock. And I'm glad to see Fly skill up Flesh Golem there. That spell amp, the, the max damage amp is 20% there, so he's standing on top of General. So that bonus damage is pretty sufficient with S4. Navi, they're smoked up. They're trying to get some deep wards down to watch that Ancient farming. They have to be able to contest it somehow. They can't let this Medusa just keep getting that acceleration. Not the best target to go for there, no-till. Pretty beefy, 1600 HP. Roger was trying to close the gap, but unable to. I mean, if you're Navi, how are you looking to play this game? Is it just, you just need to create space for Crystallize to get a few more items and, and have the rest of the team sort of split up the map and keep the lanes you know, on the side shoved in with the Nature's Prophet? Pretty much, it's tough because yeah. of how much of a deficit that the Viper is at. Yeah. He has to just try to catch back up, and he's going for four stuff. He's not going for that veil build. Goes for the attack speed as well. He's not going for that magic damage. Since they need as much right click as possible to try to deal with this Dusa. But yeah, it's really hard. They can't really group up and take fights versus OG's lineup. They don't have the team fighting lineup. They kind of just have to farm it out and hope that the PA gets big enough for them to take the upcoming fights much later on. So, you know, the money push and the first strike, but as you said, the full stuff up to the high ground. They keep the hotel alive, Roger trying for the hook shot, but he's gone in onto flying. There's four heroes here. Quick turn for Jarek with the hex and the shackle. And Roger's punished. He was hoping to find no tail, but a, a little bit of a risky play that absolutely does not pay off. Space has been there for Crystallize, and Crystallize does now have the money to get that desolator out to him. So we'll see how he turns up to the fight with that extra. Extra bit, bit of a physical punch. But still, these heroes on OG, there, as you said, they're getting tanky and tankier with the four stars as well. There's going to be the way to, to play around any Radiant sort of jump in from Na'Vi. Game. It's not going to be easy for Na'Vi's lineup. OG, they have Shadow Shaman wards up. I think they're looking for that Roche here, yeah? They're trying to make their way in it with it. I mean, this is 
very good timing for you as well, because now Desto's there. You know that Na'Vi themselves, they would have been looking for the Roche. They can't contest this Roche either. The Tombstone Serpent Wards, there's just no way unless they get some absolutely ridiculous cards. Stone Gaze there as well. I think it's pretty much impossible for Na'Vi to go in. They've got the hook shot up in 10 seconds. Yeah, there's no way. Nice DS4 already just keeping Roger back away from the pit. Name of the game for OG mostly in, in like this first 19 minutes has been just like, come at us. Because all they need to really do is just keep farming ancient stacks, and they know that they've got this late game with the Medusa. They just have to make sure that Dendi doesn't flash farm, which he can't really because he's a Viper. General. Does have Orchid on top of the drum finish, though. So he's, he's keeping up with no tail on the farm. And Eagle stepped to pick up for S4, so that catch is there. Just go a hunting for the Nature's Prophet. And General tries to split pushing up there. S4 is looking to start something bottom here, but everybody from Navi's down here. He gets scouted up by the rocket as well. All right, comes the help from Hotel. Bringing the team over for the defense. Hookshot's in, but surprise, this friend, man has got friends. He's got the Yule Steps to the buy himself some time. Rezo moves forward with the Stone Gaze. Navi, they have to get out of it. S4 comes in with the three man dream call, allowing Rezo to close the gap. They try for the TP's out, but crystallized. He's not going to make it. The PA's down, the rest, and they actually escape. They've got the lock on to Soneko. Soneko won't be as lucky as well. Some did get out. But OG find two kills, one of them being the big one as well, getting crystallized. Right, she ballers it ticked out in the base as he was falling ever so low. And what a play there between the them. Coil. The coil. The coil. Yeah. Oh, the, the coil breaks now. I mean, S4 there with that three man dream call, setting up for Reza to close the gap. And of course, the way that started, getting no tail, bringing the entire team over from top to bottom. That's sort of the textbook plays that you expect when you read how an Underlord works, that we just don't see that often. That sort of movement of the whole team just catching the opponent off guard it was that was literally, literally perfectly executed by s4 with the yules finished up even though he gets orchided yields himself up Garrix. but that man's got an orchid oh no Garrix may have made a mistake uh oh <laughs> not sure if he uh, forgot that the orchid was there i was just maybe hoping that he could get the instant hex before the orchid sign is going through that's a good one yeah. roger rooted up as the hook shot try to distance himself a bit hook shot s4's gonna chase he's got dream call back up Lays it down, five space for no tail to close the gap, and Roger, he's surrounded by three. He's gone, a quick star right. Star right from fly. Ooh, Korea. All right. Oh, that had quite a bit on him. D General gets the Korea. He's not getting out for it, though. They've got the Yule set up to cancel the TP, and General will get two. Ooh, there's a bit of time for from here. Bisonenko is not enough. They tried to get him out of there. He does get the curry though. That did have the, uh, I believe, the completed Hurricane Pike uh, off the, the Medusa there. So a little bit of a slowdown for OG, but still overall, Navi are starting to, to hemorrhage kills. It's 13 to 7. OG getting some momentum. I'm sure there'll be a few minutes without the, the completed Hurricane Pike, but I don't think OG are going to be too bothered by that at all. No. I mean, OG has, they have this Medusa who's just doing this. Yep. Farming up double ancient stacks, farming up double neutral stacks over and over again. And when you look at Navi's lineup, they don't have that flash farming ancient like hero. They no. Crystallize doesn't have a battle fury along or anything along those lines, so he can't do the similar thing that Medusa does. And Dendi falling it, so sticking at that same network. He can't. He, he's a viper. He can't flash farm. Sure, you have Nether Toxin now, but like Lumi was mentioning on the panel, no one really levels it up now again. In the early phase, they just wait to scale it up. Unless they have to the hook shot. Trying to set up onto Jax. He gets the walls down. And no tell. Came in with the ult. Into the lockdown onto Roger. But Roger, a little too speedy. He's running himself away. As no tell's continuing in. to chase. Yeah, if they can get the puck in, they should have enough damage. They've got the silence. Or not enough to finish him. He's looking for the denied to the ancient. No, he just holds the cogs. He knows that he can live. They'll turn towards Fly. Fly with the stick charges, the soul rip, and the decay. Keeping himself alive for a little bit, but it's not long enough. Crystallize jumps in, finds the crit, has the hit with the desolator. Rezo's come over as well to join in this fight. But OG, they're down too. Stone Gaze will be popped. Navi, they kite it out. They back away. It's Navi this time. Finding the favorable numbers. They get two. They only lose one. Radiance Crystallize edges closer, closer to the BKB. And oh. things certainly going to be quite scary for, for OG, especially the support. Once he has that BKB, as he can just lock down straight away onto Jerax. That's their big timing window. When they have the BKB, they just have to go. Go time. But fighting against Underlord is going to be pretty difficult. He's got Mech. He's got Vanguard. He's going to build toward Guardian Greaves and Crimson Guard. So he's going to make his team a lot more durable to withstand that 10 seconds of the BKB. 
And there's still an Aegis too. I mean, it's gonna be getting claimed soon. But yeah, the support to the big ones that will suffer. I wanna see if maybe they go for like Ghost Scepters or Glimmer Capes, something along those lines, some other defensive items after those four steps. So gets a little blink for Jarex for the catch. And fly. Pro eventually get a Glimmer Cape. But he's a hard one. Puck, Kaya, the new standard on majority of in cores. And then gonna be going for that Agonyms afterwards to deal with that BKB from the PA. Razzle's getting pretty pretty tremendous though. Two pieces of the Eye of Scotty will be finished up quite soon. See here. Dendi trying to build a BKB of it into that mushroom so he can start actually being that farmer. And you put with that death on crystallize. It is very hard to take down the juicer as you say. Back to Ancients from Rezo. Triple stack again. Gonna be starting to, be starting to get cleared up. As well as stacking up the medium camp every single time. Farm game, he will have that Eye of Scotty finished very soon after this gets finished. As well as the Hurricane Pipe once he wants to send it out to himself. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's still he's dead still on the courier. That. That's you know, right. That's oh man. He is, he's mastered. Holy God, that was still dead on the courier. Yeah. Hurricane Pike, and as you say, just a few, a couple, a couple hundred gold in that. God, he's gonna be out. He's getting a, I don't, I don't know if he's in this, but he's getting a big power peak here. He's getting about to get level 20 for that 800 plus mana on top of the Eye of Scotty. He's gonna be really hard for Navi to bring down unless they can just isolate him. Which I don't think OG is gonna let them do because of the way that no tail has itemized. And he has those griefs. Closing in on the recipe. His job is just to defend these towers from General's push. And then Dark Rift into his team. Oh, they went for a smoke. It's a good thing he can catch anything. Roger coming in for the side. Let's see if he can go through a hookshot potential, but now the smoke comes off. He backs away. Came a little too close to OG's heroes. Cool. In the trees. They want to kill Dendi Bottom. Oh, he is very isolated. So much trouble if S4 can get the lockdown. Jump four from S4. There's no tier two. He's already down. The Dream Cars there, closing the gap for No Tail. He's going to block the Dream Cars done. Moving Jackson and Rezo in as well. And the Biscardi down. Rezo just rips through him. That's Dendi down. No Viper for 50 seconds. OG with the Crete Wave moving in bottom. They're going to try and throw him for high ground. I mean, with no tell this buff, 26 HP per second. This is a real. This looks like racks. There's yeah. no cliff. How do you stop this push? Oh, gee. They're pushing up for 26 minutes in. And there is no way the Navi can stop this one. That's going to be the melee rest going down. You can see Nature's Prophet going for the split push, but guess who's there? S4 is already up top. He puts an end to the split. And they get away with this. It's looking very, very scary for Na'Vi. The OG can just group up as five. They're so strong at this point of the game. That was even before No-Tail had the Greaves complete. Roger's going to head forward, but there's a Scotty. The slow is there. Rezo just closes the gap. He has to go for the hookshot back to safety, and it does, words. does save him. But yeah, Rezo's chasing. So go for the defensive disruption, but that's just going to allow time for Rezo to close the gap. Blue Cape's not enough. Rezo gets the kill. Pops the stone. He's just moving in on his own. He doesn't even need the rest of OG. He's just going in. The rest of OG now starts to come up behind him. Well, that is looking very scary indeed. The Rezo can just walk up like that. Na'Vi can do nothing to punish it. Starting to look near impossible for Na'Vi to take any type of fights. They have to have n massive number of advantages. And I don't think OG's going to split up. I wouldn't blame them either with the lineup that they've got going on here. They've now got Blink Dagger, Phoenix on Jarex, Glimmer Cape on Fly. They've got all they need to just five man these towers. They've nearly got the Ags on S4 as well. Yeah. It's, it's all coming together for OG. As they'll look to push on this tier two. Sineko getting caught out by the pit. Roger trying to close in, but a quick force from Rezo gets him back to safety. General goes in with a oh. round has the silence. They're trying to surround him. He is dropping low on mana here, Rezo. Breakthrough as well. Can they take him home? No tail says, hold on, boys. We're going back to base. Rezo's oh, out. Everyone's God. out. No tail with the save gets Rezo and the boys back out of there. It was oh, that was actually looking almost really scary for resolution it was there. Was falling low, but stands next to the Atrophy Aura, stands next to No Tail, gets grieved up, gets that bonus armor. And now Navi. Stop it. Lies. Fine. Now go slow and back up. 
just trying to chase. Actually, I say that Jarris jumps in. He's managed to find the hex. The water down as well, Roger. Going for it. The shackles will be broken by the battery. So Chris Light plus the BKB, but the Snurf awards and the physical from Rezo is looking to be too much. He's got to rely on the evasion, but the RNG is surely not there. Crystal Lights can't survive through that. The PA is down. OG down the mid lane, taking the tier two tower. There's seven, 8k gold lead now, 29 minutes in. They are looking so much stronger than Na'Vi's heroes at this stage. It's so hard with the composition that Na'Vi have to do anything to stop this, this pressure that OG can apply with how big resolution is. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the Underlord last pick too, honestly. The, it, it was the brilliant. The auras, the damage mitigation towards Na'Vi's lineup, it's really proving to prevail. And now the Roche looks like it's the next target for OG, and I don't see how Na'Vi can contest this. Seen from just that last fight, PA popped BKB and just can't do anything. Found enough, absolutely enough. And now it's pretty much a full butterfly in a second coming up for Rezo to the top. With that Aghanims, as you mentioned. Absolutely, uh, and for, for Rezo. And it's just OG as a whole, so far today, they are looking to be on the ball, and it's... So many times this is where it's needed the most. They had to get these four wins. They've already got two, Looking and this third one is looking pretty good. They've got the silence here. They've found themselves a clockwork. Dream calls down. Roger. He's trying to do his best to buy as much time as he can. Jared Klein, General, bottom. Oh, hello, hook shot. Blocked by Rezo. Rezo's up to the high ground with the force gets the kill. Indeed, they catch General as you say down bottom. Stone gauge from resolution as they move forward, trying to back Navi away from contested, but they have lost the undying. Rezo back in, there's gonna be a buyback from General. They really want to try and contest this team fight. Disruption on to resolution. He's being forced back. They are getting OG out of the pit silence because they're onto the Medusa. And we'll crystallize in there with the death though. He, he's gonna be able to get it. Navi. They sneak back in, they claim the Aegis, they get the Roche kill, and now they're looking for more kills. Jump forward and a couple of crits, that's at no tail down. OG, they have to get the hell out of there, but Dendi, he doesn't want to let them, he's trying to chase it. He's looking for the slows. General's coming in with a global TP, he's looking for the wraparound onto Resolution. Resolution staying close to Jarek, so they can get the vision for Crystal Light to jump in, it's gonna be big, and put down the Sprout, instant a hex from Jarek, and he's quick with the blinks away. Trying to escape, Dendi's though there with the Viper Strike, Chris Light jumping forward, looking for Resolution, has he got enough damage there? Resolution might have the keys as well, and the crit comes through, Chris Light, he finds the kill on Rezo, Rezo's down for 80, oh now turns towards Fly, Fly is gone as well, three dead on OG, these heroes turn out by that, there's a DD rune available down bottom, this is absolutely huge for Na'Vi, Chris Light doing massive things there as he is able to get the Roshan, get a very successful fight off the back of it. Sure, they do lose Dendi. It is a dieback from General, but this sort of just spanner being thrown into the works of OG is exactly what Na'Vi need to get back on top of them. They couldn't really go for it just like splitting up their team. Like Jarex and... Uh... Jarex goes bottom to try to get that kill there, but because of that, yeah. Roger able to jump in and split the fight up around that Roche pit. Allows Crystallize to go in, get that Aegis Cheese. That's a huge come comeback for Na'Vi. See the swing starting to come through. OG cannot afford to have any more fights go as badly as that. No, and the break the break actually was a pretty big aspect there. He broke No Tail's atrophy aura. So Crystallize, you saw that crit that he got on No Tail. A couple of hits and he was gone, I know. Just chunked him down. He has to be careful of those movements. They can't really go for those. They can't really get split up versus Navi's lineup. PA is still pretty, pretty tough. Yeah, he's, he's gonna have the MKB. Does it? He's got the, what, the two javelins on the courier, I think. Yeah. So that is gonna be MKB done very quickly indeed, and just in time because the butterfly has been complete on resolution. Another 20, no tail, with the extra health regen. I think he's got the Crimson Guard finish now too. Okay. So he is. They want to go. Super tanky now. Let's see what they can make happen. 77 HP per second on Noto. Is the Aegis still there? Or? Aegis is on Crystal Light. Aegis is still there. On Crystal Light. Oh, hello. Shadow Demon on the front of it all. They actually dropped the wards for that. And the Tombstone. OG in sort of panic mode there as they were very worried about the rest of Na'Vi coming in. I guess they thought that it was going to be like a real full fight. Yeah. Once they had that high ground ward, they saw other heroes of Na'Vi trying to start in the port in. Just gotta be careful. Was there with the setup. Hotel's coming in with the global CP, ready to join the party. General is surrounded. 
Just don't you have the shell of a heat? Golly, there's been. They've got the detections. Netri's down. Jarex turns up. He can't see yeah, out inside the pit either because it's going to keep reapplying. So yep. he had to get a move out, but he's coiled. So good little catch there by OG. Crystal Eyes trying to do his best to split up the pressure and go for this push down mid lane. He is almost only going to have to come back up top if OG can get this push up to the high ground. Resolution leading the way. He's got the creep wave coming round. Jarex is looking for something. The TPs are all coming in mid. Jarex, I need to get the instant disable. Um, quick go step to Up the damage with the dagger. S1's going to continue to chase though. Looks for with the orb. He's got his eyes on to Crystal Eyes. Dynas is there. The face gift as well. Has to be careful. Roger, I'll be able to get away though. Stuck in the pit, Rezo has the damage. S4 continuing to try and play around with the TN. Look at that move speed of the orb. Jumps forward. Coil was back up in five seconds. Could have maybe tried to at least uh, force the BKB out if that was going to be the case. But yeah, Coil not quite back online. S4 is playing this puck super well this game, I though. I mean, it's terrifying. Look at it. He's second highest in net worth, even with Crystallize. Second highest in level as yep. well. And once he gets that level 25, we know what happens. The GPM starts kicking in. Dagon Ethereal Blade can be a big factor in this one. He has queued up the Lincoln's Orb first, but if he can go for those other two big items versus a PA, it can be pretty crucial for their lineup. And Notel is just going for just a blade mail here to try to reflect some of that damage if they do focus him. Since he has those auras around, all he has to do is survive in the fights to make his team more game. Also 14, five minutes in, 7k lead for OG. The lies is going to be spotted out. Jerax quick with the blink hex. Have they got the further through lockdown? They haven't crystallized. We'll be fine for now. He just gets to be cleaned the heat Oh, he has to be careful. And he will be fine. They get the first pop of the ages. The Shaman was down. OG still continue to move forward. Crystallized new players way out this one. He popped the BKB, but he's actually been stoked. up. He's stuck in the dream call as well. Crystallized, what can he do? He tried to jump forward for Rezo. He's looking to man up on the Medusa. Can he win this fight? He cannot. The Hex is there from Jarex. Crystallize is down. Rezo will survive. And Na'Vi, they may just lose Warrior as well. No Tail's going to take the poise out. He says, we're not leaving this one anymore. As it's getting a little risky. They were Ouch. falling a little low. And S4 will go down, but still, yeah, Na'Vi lose three. That was a... Dendi tried to Hurricane Pike and push No-Tail out of there to try to distance themselves, but yeah, that shrine... And Dendi, I don't think he expected that no at way. all. For them to come back in that quickly, as you say, going to the shrine, instantly regening up, coming back in, that's smart. Yeah, that's the. I think the first person I saw doing that was yeah. Universe when he was playing the Underguard. That's a just really good decision making coming up from No Tail. And there. the buybacks have to come through now. Dendi and Crystallize buying back. 12k gold lead now for OG. And MKB. The money's nearly there for Rezo. That high ground ward there, giving them the yep. fight access. Just Jerex with the control. That Stone Gaze as well. Follow up through the BKB on Crystallize. I mean, Jarex, he has been doing so much on the Shadow Shaman, I feel. Oh, yeah, I think everybody. I, everyone I mean, on OG yeah. is doing, their, like, they, doing exactly yeah. what they need to do in the team. This is true, yeah. You can certainly talk about everyone just being massive playmakers this game. And yeah. um, the, the three games that we've seen for them so far today. As we say, when they've needed to step it up, they absolutely have OG. Na'Vi, now 13k behind with this Viper PA duo core, not the two heroes you necessarily want in a late game situation against the Medusa Underlord. And uh, of course S4 Puck, let's not forget that man who's nearly got the Lincoln Sphere and he is level 25, does have the 420 GPM, so that Lincoln Sphere will be there very soon. And that net worth, net worth of the Puck's going to skyrocket, we can see it already, he's second highest and he's now getting quite an advantage over the PA. But he's top by Dendi. Will it try and jump forward onto Jerry? Jerry finds some time to go, Dendi gets enough time to get the Shaman wards out. And put the control on the side of it all, but Rezo pops the stone gaze. Now they have to be careful, the BKB is running low, Rezo moving forward, forced in. There'll be the destruction from Seneco trying to hold back the Medusa. They have found two of the kills from OG. Dendi in a bit of trouble, S4 jumps forward, he's got the coil control onto Crystallize. He needs to bring in more for the damage though. And now with Na'Vi coming back in, Uchi will not be able to chase any further. Big pick off there for the side of Na'Vi as they take down a few. Quick ult from the Underlord to bring him back out. S4 still hiding in the trees. Na'Vi, they're searching for him. They won't be able to find him. S4 TP's out just in time. Seneko doing a lot of work with the disruptions yep. there. 
disrupted Medusa illusions do a lot of damage. And Dendi with that fresh BKB. Able to do quite a lot, just jump starting the fight onto the Shadow Shaman. They lose Jarex right away. Still though Rezo survives throughout at all and MKB finished. He is without a doubt the big problem for the Navi in these team fights. Yeah, he's level 25 too, so now he gets the modifiers on the but that MKB. Good. The best thing they can do is just kite out that magician and try and kill the heroes around them. Yeah. It's proving to be very, very difficult indeed. Killing the supports is a good job though. It's a good uh decision there from Navi. Kill them. Probably maybe not kill Fly if he gets double tombstone down. The fights can be really hard to fight around that. But yeah, I mean it's just really hard for Navi to fight in Toji's lineup just because their sheer team fight advantage. Hex gonna be the last item for no tail. Quite a ways away. Yes, for Lincoln Smith. Rezo himself actually looking to cure for Lincoln's design. Please here. Nice. Double damage rune down bottom. G to that and look to take another attempt to the push. General TPs for it and takes it. General does have a hex finished up too, so he's looking pretty solid. Roger Blade Mill, Spirit Vessel. Not as intentional as the item that we just picked up in the last few minutes. At the same time, OG, they can't place it with me. Broshan is back up. That's the refresher that shot. That is Broshan. the refresher shot indeed. We'll probably be game to S4 or Jarex. I, I was going to say Jarex. He'd love that. Yeah. No tail. Just walking into the enemy team. Not taking much damage at all. Yeah, they, they actually take zero from Viper. <laughs> they now, find Dendi. He's in trouble. Yeah, that's going to have to put the BKB. The Dream Call down is Nash, but Dendi's going to have to hold his ground. Okay, it comes through. Rezo starting to force the back with the damage they've done. They have lost Fly on the back lines. No tail in on the front, trying to chase down Dendi, but he hasn't quite got the control. Dendi will be fine. OG getting rather split up here. Rogers managed to segregate Jarex to the side of it all. Jarex has the ghost step to turns with the shackles. He will live for now. They've got the hold on to Roger, keeping it back. Rezo actually going to pick apart the rest of Navi who tried to come in on this because they oh. felt that it was strong enough that, that Roger had that lead on the back, but that is GG. They've lost three. No buyback. buybacks. This game over. Just like that, a bit. I, Navi, they just sort of threw their bodies in there. And Rezo just stood in between Navi and Glory. And that is one game closer to the dream day that OG are hoping for. Three wins so far.